Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast, brought to you by AgriBull, the makers of Morning Farm Report. Our software gives growers the insights to make the best decisions possible about their operations. Well, I'm sure you've heard over the last couple of weeks about the incredibly bad air quality in parts of India, and I just wanted to show you uh, what was going on there and show you that it was most certainly impacting some of India's agriculture. So what we're looking at here is a MODIS image. This is one of our polar orbiting satellites, and this is about 10 days ago, and I'm going to animate for you over the last 10 days or so to show you how bad the air quality has been. So check this out. Here we are in India, and as I click play, you just watch this region right in through here very stagnant air, meaning not a strong wind combined with a lot of air pollution, has basically degraded the air quality in here to almost unlivable conditions. What I mean by that is that if I were to go outside right now very early on Monday morning and take a deep breath of air, well, if I were to go do the same thing in this part of India, I would basically be breathing in about a thousand times more pollutants in the air than I am here right in central Illinois. Uh, the particulate matter is, is very, very bad, and that gets trapped in the lungs and cause some major problems. So I just want to show you some perspective here from what our, our polar orbiting satellites can kind of pick up and just to show you how bad uh, the, the conditions are here in this part of India. Okay, let's come back to the U.S. Last seven days of percent of normal precipitation shown up here. And what we can see is that uh, other than some precipitation that moved through parts of the Corn Belt on Sunday and early Monday morning, uh, it was a relatively dry week for a lot of the Corn Belt. Uh, and uh, a lot of this precipitation here was from a week ago. Uh, but uh, the bigger story I think a lot of folks are talking about is what's been going on with the temperatures. Here's your last seven days in terms of temperature anomalies. I know it looks as though you've had a warm bias through these states, but you've got to remember this is all seven days combined. So this cold air that's been plunging into the northern tier of states certainly has come all the way down into the, into the southern states here. Uh, but it, this is the question we want to ask ourselves is how are things set up? Are they going to continue in the short term? And what should we expect in terms of maybe our next uh, two to three weeks in terms of temperature and precipitation patterns? So let's get those questions answered. As we do, we always start off with a kind of view of the overall flow of the atmosphere. What I'll do is start you back over right here uh, early Monday morning. Now, to start the week, we're probably going to see a bit of a rebounding in the temperatures across the midsection of the country. While the east is going to start off cool, midsection is going to start off warm, and the east, sorry, the west coast, because this little trough feature here is going to be quite wet at times. But that's our setup. You see big ridge here in the uh, Bering Sea, kind of a broader trough feature in the Gulf of Alaska. That will push a ridge across the western uh, and, and central states and through here. But what I want to be paying attention to is that this same flow pattern keeps reinforcing the development of a series of troughs that keeps coming basically from central Canada into the uh, northeast here and south of Hudson Bay. And that is our, our pattern setup that we need to be keeping an eye on. Watch what happens as I move forward with time. Well, Monday turns out to be pretty decent. Tuesday, we continue to see the warm up in the center part of the country. But watch what happens by the time we get into Wednesday. Wednesday, we see our first precipitation maker in this very weak uh, trough that you see, the short wave in the flow of the atmosphere here. Again, though, we've got our ridge over here in the Gulf of, I'm sorry, in the Bering Sea, trough in the Gulf of Alaska, and a very, very brief short wave that's going to move through. So this will be the next chance we have for rain, of course, after Sunday and early Monday morning's rain moves off. Uh, here's our next chance. Now, what's important here is to see that by the time we get into Thursday, we really see the pattern become amplified such that by Friday, this will be our new big feature that we have to keep an eye out on. Now, out ahead of this, we expect to see a low pressure center develop somewhere in the central plains. And then as this digs toward the northeast, this is going to kick off a, a, a rapidly deepening low pressure system that will go across the Great Lakes. And then watch what the upper level heights do. We could see things become very amplified. Look again, there's our ridge trough in the Gulf of Alaska, huge ridge out west, very, very deep trough over the east. Now we're all the way out next Sunday. So this is Saturday, Sunday time frame here. So what I'm seeing here is that the pattern is, is very much active uh, and it is highly amplified at times. So this will be our next huge shot of cold air for those folks that are in the eastern part of the country while the central states probably will, will warm up out ahead of this. So our question is, does this kind of pattern continue for a while? We're going to get that one answered in a moment here as well. Now, what does that do in terms of precipitation type and intensity? Well, we're watching the next 10 days here, uh, precipitation type and intensity. It's color-coded according 
uh, as such. So here is the leftover stuff from Sunday, finally moving into the eastern Corn Belt, not off to the northeast by Monday. But let's see what happens as the week progresses. So by the time we get into midday Monday, really a drier pattern for everywhere except for where that trough is sitting off the west coast, hammering the uh, you know the west coast over here, basically from northern California through Washington with onshore flow. But as we get into Tuesday, things look pretty dry across much of the country. We're just waiting on that shortwave trough on Wednesday to come through. And as it does, so there we go. We'll start to see it basically developing a low-pressure system out ahead of it that's going to be here just north of Lake Superior. So for a lot of people here in the central part of the Corn Belt, uh, this will be our next chance for some precipitation. It's looking like the timing will be overnight Tuesday into early morning Wednesday. And that moves very quickly toward the east, such that by you know Wednesday evening, the lows develop north of Lake Huron, dragging that cold front here into uh, parts of eastern Corn Belt. Now, as we move on through the week, remember we had that second big trough that's coming through that really starts to move in maybe early Friday morning, and there it is. Now, this thing will be getting organized Thursday night to Friday morning, but look at this deep low pressure system that it's bringing to parts of Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri. So big deep trough kind of coming through here. We have strong upper level support on the downstream side of that trough, and that's what's going to be kicking off a lot of this precipitation. Now, due to some warm air advection, that's warm air coming out of the south ahead of this, we're not going to... You know, we're going to see some warmer temperatures, some strong southerly winds, and most of our snow is going to be confined way up here in parts of Minnesota and the UP of Michigan. But as this system moves through there, the front goes racing through the Corn Belt, a lot of rain over our Great Lakes states, and this rapidly intensifies here by the time we get into Saturday uh, um, here just north of Lake Huron. But what you need to see here is that behind this, this front that's way out here, there will be some strong northerly and northwesterly winds coming right through the Corn Belt, and that will be a pretty substantially cold shot of air. And while that's coming through, the west is warming back up. So this is our big player uh, toward the end of this week. So got to keep a close eye out for next weekend's uh, next weekend in terms of precipitation. Now, if we watch it all kind of accumulate with time, this is what we're seeing. Let's play that again. We see that to start things off, we just have what's left over on Sunday, getting into Monday. But here comes the first shot Wednesday and the big shot toward the weekend. So what we're really seeing here is the Great Lakes states are staying wet as we progress through the middle part of uh, the month of November. Now, how about temperature anomalies? Let's see how big of a shot of cold air that really is. What we just watched here was the next 10 days of, of temperature anomalies. Well, starting things off on Monday, we're still dealing with that broader trough over the east. And we can see some cooler temperatures there, but watch as we move into Tuesday. You can really see the warm air, as we discussed, under that ridge kind of building back into the center part of the country. So Wednesday, out ahead of that first low pressure system, we do get some warm air advection, some cooler temperatures coming in the northern plains. But the big picture is going to be what happens, here we go, getting into Thursday and into Friday. Out ahead of that next big system, so this is now Friday at 6 p.m. Look, you can easily find the position of the front. Warm air streaming out ahead of it, cold air diving in behind it. And watch this, I do mean cold air. This is Saturday, getting into Sunday, you know, midday Sunday, we really see this big shot of cold air coming in behind that deep trough. But as we saw with that trough here over the East Coast, big ridge builds out west, and that's why things warm up back here. So we stretch this out um, for the longer term. This is what the latest edition of the ECMWF's 51-member uh, ensemble is suggesting for the entire month, basically here from November 9th through about uh, December 11th. So that's a 32-day time period. You see, because the jet stream keeps favoring that developing trough over the west, I'm sorry, over the east here, we really see our country kind of split where maybe we're favoring a broader ridge across the southwest, maybe the four corners and parts of the central plains, and a more frequent trough-like feature here across the eastern half of the country. Now, what this does not mean is that this does not mean that every day is going to be colder than average, and we discussed that quite a bit. But what we are seeing here is this pattern setting up at least through the middle part of the month, maybe even extending toward the end of the month, where we do have a warmer west and a cooler east. We kind of zoom in here on what we're seeing maybe around the time frame leading up into uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, of course, is going to be very important for a big time travel. Uh, we, we are probably seeing that pattern looking like maybe a broader ridge here across 
uh, much of the western and central part of the United States with, again, that northwest flow, that deeper trough here coming into the northern and northeastern part of the United States. So maybe this is what we're looking at. we got to keep an eye out for any big low pressure systems that may come out of this flow. We've just seen that, right? These big lows that move right through the Corn Belt, right into the northeast. Uh, it's too early to tell you if we're going to have one of those right in or on or around uh, Thanksgiving, uh, but we'll be keeping an eye out on that in our, in our next uh, few forecasts here. But overall, I think this is kind of the pattern we've settled into, at least uh, in the short term. All right, let's take a look now at South America. What you're looking at on top here is a vegetative health index. So this image is basically created using satellite data. These, in, these indexes, they have a use. Uh, they're not going to be perfect at showing you exactly the you know exactly what the conditions are, but they give us a good picture here. So on uh, November 11th, 2017, let's look down here in South America. The closer you get to the blues, the basically the healthier the vegetation is. We can see we have a lot of folks right into this part, the northern growing regions of Brazil, that are hovering in these colors and through here. Compared to a year ago, which was their best year ever, we can certainly see um, a lot more of these colors into this area versus these, uh, you know, this part which we're seeing this year. And this again just reflects the slower planting that we've had here due to some very dry conditions, especially in parts of Mato Grosso and Goiás. Now again, a lot of this is likely being driven by the La Nina that's going on right now. Uh, you know, we talked in, uh, in our video last time about maybe what this La Nina means for our winter precipitation and temperatures for the United States. We remember that this is not the only driving factor, but it's at least a, an early season, you know, kind of thing we can be looking at here. Uh, but for South America, it, it's, it's a bigger factor, and this is what I'm talking about. We just got the latest uh, long-range projections from the National Multimodel Ensemble. This is eight separate global models uh, giving us a forecast. And what's interesting is that where it has been dry over the last 30 days, so look at this image kind of embedded here, the part of Mato Grosso, Goiás, maybe these northern and eastern growing regions, the longer range models are projecting um, you know, some drier weather through the December, January, February time frame in here as well. In fact, this is very La Nina-ish, if you wouldn't mind me calling it that, uh, that the models are picking up on here. Very wet in the Amazon, dry in the eastern parts of the growing regions for Brazil, and dry in Argentina. This is really what La Nina tends to do to South America. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean massive hits on yields in South America? Well, the answer to that is kind of a tricky one because they plant so many more acres every year. So production-wise, this will likely be their second or third largest crop on record, more than likely their second. But this does bring our yield uh, anomaly forecasts for South America back down toward trend, maybe slightly below trend, which will be somewhere around 47, 48 bushel per acre on soybeans. So uh, again, it's not looking like a huge year for beans like they had last year in South America. But again, there's so much that can still happen with this growing season, and this is just a preliminary forecast. One thing I do feel confident about is that we are going to see a reduction in the safrina crop being planted as corn. And that corn that will be planted will be planted late. So maybe we'll have some kind of reasoning here for corn markets to, uh, to maybe do a little bit of a rally as we see that Brazil is not going to be producing the same amount of corn that it produced last year, which was a record crop. And with that, I think I better wrap up this forecast video. We hope you look forward to Agrible's next ag forecast coming out on Thursday. Get morning farm report for your operations, complete with a daily email that shows you a snapshot of your field conditions each morning. Go to morningfarmreport.com. Sign up for a free account. Full grower accounts are free if you sign up for our sustainable yield program or for growers who work with AD merchandisers. Look forward to talking to you again on Thursday.